over here real quick. And you're seeing what this specific phase is, what's being offered is the awareness of what this energy is about. And as you know, it turns out why people, you know, uh, have been sleeping, that a lot of the knowledge here about occultism specifically comes from an angel or a planet in this case called Shukra. Okay. And this planet or this angel or this energy of Shukra was basically the one who took the knowledge from on high, if you may, or the heavenly knowledge and brought it to man. So this is also Prometheus, who's also Venus, who's also even Lucifer and all the rest of the terms that they put around all of this, the light bringer and all this. But what it's about is, is taking the knowledge of how the heavens work and bringing it to the earth. So that's why they said that, oh, well, this angel taught men and women the sacred arts of heaven, right? And then they go on to cursing man and woman from there. But it's very simple that there is a knowledge about how time moves. And that's why Venus traces out a concave pentagram in, in the sky over a series of time. And that time has also a lot to do with a specific shape. That shape has to do with the geometry called phi. And we find that things that are on the planet have a tendency to be created within that set of geometry. Just as you would see a, a, a sand dollar, just as you would see a flower with five petals, that there is a specific geometry and that geometry is seen to be very godlike. Okay. So when they start breaking down that knowledge, that became astrology. So the people who were teaching, the, the beings that were teaching this knowledge were teaching this knowledge in what you would call the ancient Orient. You would call it Persia in those times or even before then. You call them now the Hindus. They had already been passing this knowledge on continuously. Who knows who the original being was that came and brought it? They say Venus was the original being that bought it. But after that point, it was passed throughout the ages through gurus that had this knowledge through symbolism, geometry, and certain levels of knowledge about how a person's temperament would be if they're born under certain astrological signs. And why many have been like trying to authenticate if astrology is or astronomy is real or not and how it works. It's very simple that the con the conception point of when you come into play, which is actually when your parents come together, it opens up a vacuum in itself in, in what you would call space and a certain amount or a certain type of dust, depending on what's going on in that moment. That's why it says that man is from the dust, but they're not talking about the dust like the dust in your house. They're talking about the periodic table. The periodic table is the dust. So when the vacuum opens up at that particular moment, when you're coming into conception, it sucks in that cosmic dust or those elements in that increment because you know every day there's a different increment the periodic table is what's really moving like there could be more mercury there could be more of uh, uh more ruthenium more cobalt and those variants is what cr creates the differences within us but that moment when the vacuum is open is when it sucks in all of that and that becomes your composition and so through that there became this knowledge of seeing well if a person had this kind of composition their temperament is going to be like this. They're going to be more adverse to this. And they just went, as they say, went ham on it. They just start writing out all of these correspondences because they were able to then line up how human beings connect into what's going on in the world. Okay. So there's no need to reinvent the wheel. What we did was then say, okay, well, how can we modernize this knowledge? Also, you'll notice that Cornelius Agrippa, who was clearly a, a, a one of the most enigmatic occultists of his time, wrote in three volumes of books trying to do this exact thing, which was trying to find correspondences within all of nature's elements. I don't think his work was anywhere near as refined as this work, but then this work for sure predates his work. So in conclusion, this is where this knowledge is actually coming from. And what we've done is, is we've bought a mixture of the knowledge, even in relation to your diet, so this is going to start going through what you need to be eating and what could be a bit more trouble for you. Because like if you got hot temperament, right, and you find yourself chewing on peppers all the time and eating eggplants, it literally means that you're doing exactly what creates the most chaos for you. 
there is a way for you to even program your attitude with what you're eating. Now that you're on the cucumbers and things, you're a lot less agitated. You see what I mean? So it's those kind of things that give you the ability to have self mastery, right? So we give you even access to some of the works to get you more familiar with the system. We talk about how to clear your space because you know, you got folks running in and out of your house with their shoes on dogs and stuff hanging all around and all this stuff has energy. This energy is just basically like barnacles. You can't look at this energy like, oh my goodness, it's evil and it's not supposed to be there. It's about the wavelength. And if you haven't been moving around a lot in your space and then there's been an accumulation mainly in the corners, when you turn on the light, all the darkness goes into the corner. If you could watch what, 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 what you call darkness, where it actually goes when lights come on is it goes into an angle or a corner. So generally, like in the corners of your house, this will be like if there's any energies in a space or in a room that are stagnant, that's where they are. So when you take Palo Santo and Sage and you go corner to corner on your house at least one time and leave no room for escape, even the bathroom or the closet, you can completely clear a space. But some people, they don't know about that or they don't think it works or whatever. So this takes you through that process of like, look, this is how you can fortify your space. And again, some may know about that already, but we don't want to leave any stone unturned. We start giving you some instruction and some links to go ahead and get right into your, your aesthetic or burning up this fat. You know what I mean? Starting to get your oxygenation happening because as we talk here, your oxygenation, and you may not be able to read this text, but the oxygenation is, is a key to the portion of implosion that you need to cause. So again, this entire workflow, and I'm still going here, I'm still scrolling through this, is really also unique to this path. And it's going to go right in. It's going to give you power elements. It's going to let you know what kind of works for you and what you need to be having around you as far as crystals are concerned. And it's going to explain to you again about things like the electrochemical balance. Like all crystals are made of, of a series of minerals. When we're trying to get certain things into our body to break, to break through, you know, because your body is very protected. It has different membranes that don't allow certain things to pass through down to the cellular level. But the, the light from crystals and the elements from crystals are capable of doing that because they have the electrochemical composition. So just like if you go and Google amethyst right now and you go to the Wikipedia entry, you'll see the amethyst actually consists of a whole range of what you would say is minerals or chemicals. And that's what's giving it the color. That's what's doing, et cetera, et cetera. And then having that around your body, if you are configured to actually be able to, to be replenished by those kind of energies or essences gives you what we call your power stone. So these are the things that, again, thousands of years of work here. This is not somebody just coming in and saying, hey, I think it's like this. These are sages who had already tuned themselves into a level of being able to know, just like in Ayurveda, what you eat and where it goes. So again, that goes all the way up to phase two. So there's another section of this and this deploys over, I think it's three months. Yeah. And and again, that's free for you on the site. And the other thing is here is, so that's one of the ways that we're doing, uh, we're bringing more of awareness to uniqueness. Now, there's also a process here because there's a reason why we're always, we're, we're doing this. I want to let everybody understand because the context of today's build was really about creating more ultra humans, creating more superheroes, et cetera, creating more activated beings, whatever term you avatars, whatever term you want to give it today. But it, it is a very real thing. And I feel like that I, I would just only can lead by example. Me coming in here every day for the last 11 years, working to get others to expand themselves is superhero type stuff, whether we see it that way or not, right? So we're talking about something that is very achievable and that if others begin to do it, it does make it a very massive impact. If you can say that I've made an impact on your life and there's others that can say that, that's just off of this motivation to keep going and doing what I can see in the design of even nature is probably what we would want to do for each other.